Hi, my name is Lindsay Grace. I'm Night Chair in Interactive Media at the University of Miami, and I'm the chair for Indicate Horizons this year. I've prepared some thoughts that I think will get you excited about the event that we've put together for you, and uh, let's just get started. All right, let's get started. So welcome to Horizons. My name is Lindsay Grace. I'm a professor, game designer, developer, artist, and author. Uh, I work at the University of Miami, where I'm Knight Chair in Interactive Media, a position funded by the Knight Foundation. So I'm your Horizons Chair, and this is Indicate Horizons. Its goal is to celebrate the next generation of game makers. This is our first, so this is the inaugural uh, Indicate Horizons, and it's really an opportunity to celebrate your work as faculty and as students, and as the tech that powers our work. As a community, it's an opportunity to help you connect with the wider games industry. Both its competitive side, its artistic side, and its whimsical side. It's a celebration. It's an online festival. It's kind of a worldwide variety show of indie games in academia. So I kind of call it a showcade involving streaming, gameplay, demos, and more, featuring your academic work. And I know it has been a difficult year, kind of difficult year where it feels like life mode is on the ultimate difficulty. But you're here now. Your time is now. So seize the day. We invite you to learn, laugh, and love the work. We are here to celebrate the work you've done. We are here to celebrate the work you will do. And celebrate both the future and the past. That's sort of what Indicate Horizons is about. So I don't know if this is a sunrise or a sunset, but regardless, we look toward the horizon, eager to know what's next. On your journey, one of the easiest things to forget is that we were all once students. So what's next? It can be a confusing and intimidating question, but it's important to remember that the best of us remain students. And I'd love to insert some kind of handy quote about always learning here. Uh, maybe something like this, be a learner first, a master second, and a student always. Or maybe it needs a cool graphic, like the benefits of lifelong learning, or some other infographic that helps you understand why retaining and always becoming a student is a good idea. But ultimately, I just want to remind you to remain playful, as I was, to accept our mistakes, because we are all still learning. And it's all on our path to something new. Because the character of games is often to look toward the new, to embrace play, to keep making, to embrace novelty, and to bring something new to today. And as faculty, our goal is to nurture that future, turn our students' eyes toward the horizon, and encourage students to search further than we have. Today, I want to encourage you to have fun, to ask questions, and to remain open. And enjoy this moment. As an 80s film once reminded us, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. So as life is racing by you, it's important to take moments and appreciate what's there. To say thank you. So thank you to the people who inspire us, and thank you to the people who learn with us. Thank you to those who helped us get where we are today, as teacher, as peer, as mentor, 
and friends. In that spirit, I'd like to acknowledge our partners. As platinum partners, we have Aberté University, American University Game Center, DePaul University, and George Mason University. We also have platinum partners at Kent State University, Long Island University, Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, and the University of, of California, Santa Cruz, the University of Miami, and the University of Texas at Austin. We also have plus partners, Marist College and University of Tulsa. And we have a variety of school partners as they are listed here. I'd also like to thank our corporate sponsors, uh, offer, uh, Amazon Web Services, offering reliable, scalable, and inexpensive cloud computing services, as well as Kickstarter, a global crowdfunding platform focused on creativity. And the nonprofit foundation, Knight Foundation, providing grants in journalism, communities, and the arts. I'd like to acknowledge uh, my co-organizers, Jonathan Elmergren, Andy Phelps, and Celia Pierce, as well as recognize Indicate's leadership, which has been instrumental in making this happen. This really is an Indicate event. So Aaron Shaver and Stephanie Barish. It's also important to recognize that there are a lot of staff, uh, like our festival, festival director, Sam Roberts, and a variety of others who've really made this uh, and continue to make this event happen. So I'd like to acknowledge their efforts as well. And to HEVGA, the Higher Education Video Game Alliance, which has helped support this event. Uh, and if you're unfamiliar with HEVGA, it's to create, designed to create a platform for higher education leaders who will underscore the cultural, scientific, and economic importance of video game programs in colleges and universities. So it's been a long way getting here. And with, uh, for those of you who have had less than 15 years of experience as games academics or as students, you might not recognize where games have gone in the last few years. So games used to be exotic programs. And sometimes they were the focus of ridicule, something laughable, why would you study this? And since then, games have, sin have proliferated. And you're part of that growing community. These are the people who create some of the most interesting games, often as students. So as an example, you could look at Narbuckular Drop, which ultimately became Portal. Or you could look at Game Jam games like World of Goo. But I also want you to recognize that success is not just about sales. Success does not equal sales. Success is really change. It's getting players to smile, like my game Critical Gameplay Wait, or excited, or cry, and cringe, or giggle. It's about getting people to connect, or think differently. Because game making changes us. It helps us find new passions, push ourselves to new limits, develop community, find new careers, and address complex problems like the Indicate Climate Jam. It also helps us grow intellectually. And so I want to remind you that this event is about you. It's about your work, your aspirations, your community, your future, and your past. It's an event that looks back at the sunset of the academic year behind us and toward the future. This is Indicate Horizons.
machine build a game capable of guiding my emotions, similar to that of human optimisms? Sonancian is both a level generator and a sonification system that constructs and selects audio by combining evolutionary computation and machine learning algorithms. Level generation starts by first defining an intended fluctuation of tension that a generated level should abide to. A genetic algorithm is then used to adapt the level structure and its components, like monsters and light sources, in such a way that it follows the defined trail of tension. Once the level structure is generated, another process called sonification selects and places audio assets according to the progression of tension derived from the generated level itself. But one question remains. How does the system select which audio asset to play? To find the relationship between sound and human emotion, a crowdsourcing experiment was conducted, allowing annotators to rank between two sound bites in terms of tension, arousal, and balance. Over a thousand human annotations were obtained through our crowdsourcing platform. These annotations were subsequently used to train preference learning models capable of predicting the tension, arousal, and balance of low-level sound features with an approximate accuracy of 80%. These prediction models allow Sonancia to pick the most appropriate audio asset for each section of the level. Once level construction and sonification is completed, a fully-fledged 3D horror level, entirely designed and sonified by a computational system, is ready to be played. So prepare to be scared.
Name a fun game. Chances are, someone won't agree with you. Everyone wants to make a game that is fun, but fun isn't the same for everyone. Harnessing innovative machine learning techniques, Massive Entertainment is working with the Institute of Digital Games at the University of Malta to find out what motivates players. Creating content that players will love doesn't need to be guesswork anymore. To predict player motivation, the researchers used data gathered from almost 300 players of Tom Clancy's The Division and ran it through a preference learning algorithm. Using game metrics, play styles, and the Ubisoft Perceived Experience questionnaire, the algorithm was taught to predict presence and the motivations of players as defined by the psychological theory of self-determination, namely competence, autonomy, and relatedness. Thank you.